Um, so I'm super excited to be here tonight. I know uh, we didn't get to do this at all last year. So I, I really wanted this to be in person uh, to you know, celebrate um, everything that we've accomplished this season together as a family. Okay? And that's exactly what we've been. So welcome, all right, for people that are randomly watching, I'm Coach Edwards, all right? Uh, welcome to our Facebook live stream of the 2021-2020-2021 uh, hockey season. And, uh, you know, when I took the job in June, if you would have said, um, uh, I would have had to go through things like this at the beginning of this season, that I was not just myself, but our whole entire team and program. Um, man, I, I did not sign up for that, I don't think. Um, and I don't think I would have ever been prepared for it. I don't think anybody was. Uh, but, you know, we, we said at the beginning, as a coaching staff, that it takes a village. And it took every single one of us, the guys behind me, um, all you guys and all the parents in front of us. And I'm just really excited to be here and, and uh, you know, just celebrate the success of probably one of the most uh, weird hockey seasons I've ever been a part of in my coaching career. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to try to do this as, as quickly as possible. Before we get started, though, I have a, a lot of people to thank, and if I forget people, I apologize. You know, there's always somebody that you forget, but um, just a blanket statement for everybody in the program, parents, uh, alumni, um, administration, uh, the support for our, re our reverse raffle this year was astronomical. And I tell you what, it's, it's an indication of the gentlemen that are sitting here before me and the job that you guys have done to shape these young men to who they are right now. And without that support, I mean, that was huge for us. I mean, we went back in the beginning and Piper and Christina Steffel and Taya Sears and Meredith and Diana Stefanchik and I think Kristen Hillebrecht. Um, and we were like, can we pull this off? Can we pull this off? And we did, and that's a testament to the families that are sitting here and the players that are sitting here and the coaching staff. Um, so thank you for that. So some specific thank yous. Uh, Taya Sears for all your hard work on the raffle and filling in for Phil when Mr. Sims was not there. <laughs> um, Meredith Stauffer, she's our Booster Club treasurer. And again, being the treasurer and ordering things and, and taking care of all the, the money situation that we had to deal with with the reverse raffle and the emails and the, the ticket sales, it's, it's truly appreciated because without the parents involved, none of this can happen for these young men up here or us as coaching staff. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Diane Stefanchik for the raffle and helping out with senior night. Um, Beth Bissler's photography all season. I think she's taking photos today, so make sure you get my good side up. <laughs> um, and also, I believe you helped out with senior night as well. I can't remember. So if, if you didn't, I, I, well, you wouldn't because you're a senior parent. <laughs> all right, Kristen Hillsbrecht, uh, the reverse raffle. Um, thank you. Uh, Christina Steffel, I mean, you, you've done a lot of stuff throughout the course of this hockey season. Um, the raffle. Uh, Facebook, our, our communications online, Facebook Live for all of our games so that people that could not be in attendance were there. Uh, I wrote it down, this is why I write stuff down. And organizing all the home game stuff, setting up, because we were able to take care of the, the ticket gates and stuff at the home game. So uh, Christina was behind the scenes setting all that stuff up so the coaches and myself could get prepared for games and not have to be worried about who is working the home penalty box, who is working the visitor's penalty box, who's doing the score clock, who's doing uh, the, uh, the announcing, okay? So I, I really, truly appreciate that. Um, Kelly Sims and Daniel Brown, you guys came and sat at the raffle and you guys were the people that were marking off to make sure we had the right numbers called and, and double checking, thank you very much. It's, it's always nice to get the younger uh, families involved at the beginning of this season, and uh, Mr. Mr. Sims was our he was our film guy for primarily most of the season. Him and Taya kind of tag teamed that, and uh, I just you know with everybody, and this is the parents, all right, um, you know all of you, thank you so much because without it, all right, this this season wouldn't have been when it wouldn't have turned out the way it was without everybody in this room. 
I can't reiterate that enough. The positivity, the resilience, um, the family atmosphere, um, fantastic. Uh, you know, my coaches. All right, this is Mike Haney. He's over here. You can come say hi on Facebook Live, Coach Haney. <laughs> Uh, Coach Amy, and I'm going to bring Coach Piper up at the same, not to say that both these guys, and not to say that Coach Gallagher and Coach Amy didn't do a lot, but these guys were the road warriors all season long. All right, these guys rode the bus to and from practice, to and from games. All right, it was an easy job for me. I just showed up at the arena. They took the kids to and from, and I'm telling you, man, it was, it was, it was great for me. <laughs> I, I, I love, I love it. It's yeah, fantastic. Sure <laughs> but, you know, without their support in doing that, um, you know, it, it was a huge success. Getting the drying room taken care of, uh, taking guys' temperatures, and just making sure we were doing the right things and we had a place to call home. All right? And for forever, Franklin is now going to be our home. All right? That's where we're going to work out. That's where we're going we're gonna to shoot. Like, we're, that's going to forever be our home, man. And without these guys stepping up, you know, I, I learned a lot when I coached football at Mentor from Steve Trippisano. And you surround yourself with people that have been there before, all right, that you trust. And every single one of these guys behind me, without you guys this season, uh, none of it would have mattered. So I appreciate you guys, specifically you two. Um, Coach Gallagher, Coach Gallagher, you're behind me. Come on up. All right, former alumni right here, 2012, 1989, right? 1992, all right, and then our goalie coach, Steve Angus. Um, like, honestly, please give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> well, some of these guys, behind some of these guys, this guy's got a fiance, Beef, you, you got a lady? I'm single. Single. <laughs> Beef's single. But the other people that should get some of the credit behind the scenes are, are these guys, uh, significant others. Okay, for the time commitment that their their spouses allow for them to do this. I mean, Mike's the head baseball coach. All right, Brent's the head golf coach. I, you know, without that support from their families to allow them to be here, you know, we couldn't do the things that we've done. And, and I truly appreciate that. So, to all of these guys, significant others, please give yourselves a round of applause. and parents, thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate it. But the, the biggest people that I need to thank is, is my wife, Nicole, and my sons, Tyler and Brandon. Um, when I asked them to, to do this, they were on board. Um, and without that love and support, and, and this is something for all you guys to learn, family is forever, all right? Family will do anything for you, and without their support, um, I, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish the things with these guys this season. And, I, I, you know, Nicole, Tyler Braden, I love you. Thank you. Um, you know, this was a rough year for Coach Edwards, and I don't want to, uh, excuse me, um, but to the players. When you guys showed up, and I know we've had this conversation, but for you guys to be there for me in my moment of need, all right, that, that says a lot about your character. Um, and I appreciate that. And I love you guys for that. Okay? Alright, so, um, I guess I should move on. Oh, the last thing I would like to thank Kent City Schools. To, to all of the, the Kent City Schools that have been so flexible for us to allow us to, you know, travel to the pond and play games. And being so flexible with us being busing the kids to and from games and practices. Without the support of the school system, you know, I mean, it was tremendous. So thank you, Kent City Schools, and, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to lead these young men. All right, so I guess team accomplishments, I don't want to dwell too much on the team stuff, but we did do a lot of good stuff this season as a team. I mean, all the adversity that we've come over, come, come through, every time an obstacle got in our way, we just knocked it out of the way. All right? We took it, we took it and we knocked it down. Okay? A couple of things. We came in, we were runners-up in the uh, Normandy Thanksgiving tournament. Um, I think we were close to making the championship of the MLK tournament. I, I don't know. I got to watch that on Facebook Live. That was during Coach Edwards' quarantine. Um, but I think the tremendous thing, and I think it was our last, thinking off the top of my head, I want to say we were, 
So we, our last five games before we played in the States, we were three and two. And out of those five games, we won three of those games in overtime by one goal, right? Including a triple overtime win, all right, in the Baron Cup. I mean, the resilience, again. Like, again, we were up four to two. We blew a two-goal lead, and you guys didn't, you never quit. All season long, there was no quit in you guys, and that's a testament to your guys' character. All right, I really appreciate that. But nothing, that moment, and we talked about this in the locker room, that moment you're going to have forever is after we were down 3-0 against Aurora, and we came back, and we won 4-3 in open time. All right? Nobody gave up. Nobody was negative. And I, I can say one thing about this group of young men. You guys were so positive. Nobody got anybody down. All right? Yeah, families fight. There were probably some obstacles there. But from what we saw as coaches... You guys were phenomenal, all right? And you saw it. We looked over to Aurora's bench. What was going on in their bench during that 3 0 fight? Yeah, they were chirping, right, Cincy? All right, they were chirping. All right, they were, they were getting up. But you guys stayed together, and you won that game as a team because you guys know we're a family, and that's how we do things here at Rough Rider Hoppers, okay? So those are just some of our minor accomplishments this season. Uh, again, um, so let's, without further ado, let's move into the awards here. I'm going to introduce uh, Coach Gallagher. He's going to he's going to do the awards for the freshmen. All right, Coach Gallagher. Hello, everyone. All righty. Uh, first, we have Gary Brown. Go on, come on up here, Gary. Um, one of my favorite things uh, that I remember about Gary is he played his first high school hockey game against North Olsen. Yep. And watching this guy rise to the occasion was, it was a treat. I mean, you know, freshman gets thrown right to the fire. Here you go, first hockey game of preseason. Boom! <laughs> and this guy, he stepped up big time and he was able to break pops out, get it in deep and, you know, Scored a goal too, coach. Scored a goal. There we go. I mean, I mean, I was so excited I didn't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just seeing how his teammates rallied around him uh, was real, was real awesome. So congratulations, Eric. Uh, before Coach Gallagher goes on, that's a, there's another, that was one of the other things I should have talked about, team accomplishments. We had two freshmen score in the first game they ever stepped on the ice in a Rough Rider uniform this year. Garrett Brown and then Simpson, you had two in that game, I believe, right? So, I, I mean, like, again, no preseason, no nothing. Here you go, high school hockey. Yeah. These guys score goals. So that's that's special. Awesome. Very special. Uh, next we have Matt McCann. Matt uh, <laughs> keeping just his letters. He must have got the, the numerals and the different scores this year. Didn't get the numerals. All right, we'll get your set. All right, uh, so, so Matt, first year playing hockey, right? Yeah. Yep, and it was it was a it was a blast watching you develop as a player. Um, you know, you jumped right into it head first. You got a lot of shifts towards the end of it where we would just throw you in the mix, you'd go out there, you you make the hit, you'd, you'd pass the up and you do your job and that's all we can ask of you. And um, you know, we're very happy to have you on the team. I've told you this before, when you're on the bench and you're very positive and you're getting the guys going, that helps out. Doesn't matter who you are, you're a positive uh, influence on the guys. So thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, next we got Brad Sims. Brad is a scholar athlete, so he is receiving the scholar athlete award. Congratulations, Brad. high school hockey game that's uh that's not something that everyone gets to say um you know brad it was it was very uh it was very fun to coach you this year um, you listen to what i would tell you to do you would respond to adversity and you became a huge part of the lineup as a freshman which is which is a major accomplishment um you know like you're a you're a fun uh smart aleck kid that i, I enjoy uh <laughs> 
I enjoy talking, uh, you know, whenever it is, hockey with you, video games with you. Uh, you know, we, we had a lot of fun together in practice, and I'm excited to have you back. But not least, we have uh, Alessio Simpson. Alessio is also receiving his uh, letter and his numerals. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, you know, real quick about Alessio, he, uh, he was a major part of the back end of the defense. Uh, he, was a, he was a very strong player, and we, uh, we enjoyed having him this year. So thank you, Alessio. All right. Uh, because I know he won't talk about himself. Um, when he talked about how cool and calm and collective the athletes were during those overtime games, a lot of that has to do with the messages that they were receiving from the coach. I've been around the program for a long time. He didn't lose his pool, and that's why they didn't lose their pool. It was fun to coach in an environment where Brad was able to talk to these kids and watch them feed off his energy. That's why we were waiting in overtime. That's why these kids were not getting at each other. We watched that Aurora game. We beat Aurora because Brad outcoached them. Plain and simple. It wasn't about talent. Yeah, I think we were a better team. Brad outcoached them. That's why we won that game. We won't talk about that. We'll talk about the players. But that's a sign of a good coach. And it was enjoyable to watch it happen time and time again. In the locker room between periods. He wasn't blowing up the locker room. He was talking to them like young men. And letting them make the decision on the ice. Yeah, we're a family. Absolutely. And it starts at the top. So, top four words. I'll go in alphabetical order. First up, Michael Heaney the third. Tonight, Mikey will be receiving his second year pin. The pins are for athletes who have already received a letter. So this is your second year pin. Mike will also be receiving the Scholar Athlete Award from the Suburban League for maintaining a 3.5 GPA or higher during the season. Congratulations. <laughs> this season, Mikey had five assists. Now, that wasn't from him not trying to score goals, because he tried to score a lot, okay? The effort was there. He just couldn't find the net. And again, he trusts. One of the best parts about coaching Mike this year was the growth that we saw throughout the season. He grew and he grew and he grew. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, he may have taken a couple of dumb penalties. <laughs> but as the season progressed, we didn't see that. He grew as a man and he grew as a leader. He would come up, you guys, coach, what could I have done better there? Coach, how do I do this? That's what we're working for. His season at the end of the year showed us just how good he's going to be. And it showed us how hard he's going to work and wants to work. And what his trajectory is going to be in this sport. Mike, well done. <laughs> Next, Luke Kilbreth. Luke Hillebrecht is out of town, going to be with us tonight, but I know he is on Facebook Live watching. Luke will also be receiving his second year pin. Uh, Luke this year had three goals and two assists. Unfortunately, Luke had to miss a little bit this year. No fault of his own. Um, Luke had some great games with us this year. And we know that Luke is going to be back next year, and he's going to work as hard as he did this year. Um, and when Luke is on, I'll tell you what, he is on. 
Uh, one of the goals he scored this year is one of the prettiest goals I've seen as a high school coach. Um, he was diving as he took a shot near side. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and Luke, enjoy your spring break, bud. I can't wait to get you back and get you working for next year because we need you out there on the ice as a positive influence and leader. Great season, bud. Owen Owen will also be receiving his second year pen. Owen's another one, working hard at it. And one of the things I like seeing with Owen as the season progressed, he started throwing his body around up there. And that's one of the things that some of the kids were missing a little bit. When he got out there, especially towards the end of the year, and he started throwing his body around, he was a force out there. And especially as a left-handed shot, where we don't have a lot of those, we're going to need more of that from him. All right? Owen, oh, keep working hard at it. We need you out there next year being a force to be reckoned with. Okay, bud? Great job. <laughs> Finally, Stan Safanchik. receiving his second year pin. And again, that's for people who lettered last year or in another sport. Sam finished the year with two goals and assists and Teddy's hat at the end of the season for his great play. Sam, another one who grew tremendously as he continued to get more touches on the ice. Again, Sam, like Owen, as that season grew on, started throwing his body around a little bit out there as he was getting more touches. I'll tell you what, we needed a little bit more of that. Every time we put him out there, he gave us exactly what we asked him for. He was a little spark out there. And I'll tell you what, Matt McCann, where you at? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Matt, what you were doing on the bench was getting him going. <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Everybody going. So I'll tell you what, and you know what? To see the sophomore class grow the way they did, all of them throughout this season shows us that we have a bright future. All of you guys. And Mike, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that you got Teddy's hat once this year as well. Okay? Guys, sophomore class, great work this year. You've got big steps to take for next year. Work hard in this offseason. Okay? Well done, guys. Matt, what was it you always would say on the bench? What was that thing you were doing in the... Yeah, I heard it in baseball the other night up in Shark when you were playing. Yeah, no mercy, reverse. No mercy. You was like, no mercy, reverse. <laughs> right, that's what you were saying the whole time. All right, no mercy, reverse. No mercy, reverse. And I heard it up at, uh, in my uh, my current hometown of Shark at the JV baseball game on Monday. <laughs> so it was pretty fun. Uh, Coach Haney is going to take care of the juniors. Coach Haney. Excuse me if I'm a little nervous in front of a hot mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I too want to um, pass on my sentiments here. Um, I think being a head coach uh, for 20 years now, um, I've had the opportunity to run my own program and you know watch other guys from a distance as a parent. But to be able to be in a, a locker room, in a coaching room, uh, with this group of guys has been fantastic for me. Um, Coach Edwards is is not just a friend, he's family to me. Um, we've known each other since we were, I uh, got barely born, you know what I mean? And, and I think that um, for him to step into this role, right guy, right time. And I, I think it, he did a lot of good things for a lot of good people this year. And I'm, I'm very proud that he asked me to be a part of this. Um, Coach Piper is someone that I've known since the mid 80s, uh, we went to high school together. I played golf for his dad uh, for a short time. Um, as tough as he may seem at times, his dad was tougher. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a fantastic coach. He's a better person. Um, the hard edge at times is filled up behind that with a lot of love that most people don't see. 
Um, it gave me an opportunity to be around another head coach that I got to learn from this year, too. Um, these two young guys um, made me feel young again at times. And I'm not a very good skater, right? so I will, I will say this. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that I made it through the whole season without falling down in practice. And um, watching these guys skate made me skate slower. <laughs> they're, very, they're very good skaters. Um, um, but two great young coaches, you know I mean, on the verge if they want to do this moving forward um, and continue to climb you know, through the coaching ranks, they're going to do wonderful things. And I hope it's here um, for a long time. Um, with that being said, uh, this has been really fun. And I get to talk about two guys um, that I've known since they were little boys, too. Um, with the juniors, and so I got two great stories about both of them that I'm going to share. But I, what I want to do is I want to call both of you up here, and I'm going to talk about Gavin real quick. And I'm going to call both of you up here because there's so many similarities and, and some things I want to talk about. So give me one second. Um, um, I got my third guy is Gavin Parker. Gavin couldn't make it tonight. Um, he earned his uh, pin. He lettered last year uh, as a sophomore. Um, I think this program is really cool sometimes to, to see guys that have never played hockey before step out on the ice and learn. Matt McCann in the room right now um, loved to do it. I was a kid that loved hockey, and I, we just couldn't afford it when I was a kid. And so I, my friends played and I watched. Um, I told myself and my wife that I wasn't going to do that with my boys, and I wanted to see them get out and, and play if that's what they wanted to do. And, and I love seeing guys like Matt who are athletes, and guys like Gavin who, who are cool kids that you know, want to be a part of something and come out and learn and, and contribute. So that's fantastic, and I'm, you know, I'm glad that Gavin had an opportunity to come out the last few years and be a part of this. So, uh, Gavin Parker, Jr. <laughs> um, my other two guys are um, both juniors. I've known since they were uh, little kids skating in the, uh, the cycling organization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you both up. So, uh, junior number 10, Brandon Kramer. Okay, um, so so here's the thing, a couple things I wrote down, and, and I want there's some really cool similarities. Um, both guys played 17 games. Both guys, you know, one one had four assists, one had five assists. Um, one, I, I think. Uh, kind of found a home this year, right? And, and found a niche, and, and where do I fit in? And you know, sometimes in a program that has one team, there's no freshman team, there's no JV team, um, the expectation is, is I want to play, right? But am I ready to play, and where do I fit in, and, and whatnot? You, you gotta find a, you find a niche, and I think we found a niche this year, right? Because I know in the past you've done a little bit of everything, right, since you're a little kid, right? And, and I think about Max, and Max is a guy who's been a defender most of his life, right? And, and he's kind of gritty, and, Gets after a little bit, kind of try to get that from dad, right? Or, or, he, or he demands that of you and he doesn't say it's wrong. Right? But, so the idea here is um, I've known these guys a long, long time and I've watched them grow up as youth hockey players and, and find, they finally this year they found maybe a love and a passion that sometimes, I'm not sure, was there, right? And, and I think even at the beginning of the season, when I, I started coming around and I was around these guys, I know them, you know what I mean? So I know them by first name when we talk a little bit. And I was seeing them, I was kind of struggling to get to practice sometimes. Not because it had, you know, getting there, but it was like, I gotta go to practice, I gotta go to the weight room, you know what I mean? Something like that. And like, do I wanna play? Where do I fit in? And then when when philosophies change, right? And I think that's what happened this year. Coach Edwards brought a philosophy this year that is vastly different than a lot of other head coaches. Um, myself included, and, and what he did was, we just talked about two freshmen that scored in their first game, right? And I, I think that's huge. I think it's huge that you throw a little responsibility at someone at a young age, and then they feed off of it, and they want a little bit more. And they want to do more, and they want to do more, and they want to get better, and they want to keep building off of what they're doing. Well, these two guys saw a head coach that demanded that he believe in them, right? And that they perform, and they play a role, and they... They build off their role and they get better. So what I saw out of both of them as the season goes on was, man, Coach kind of believes in me. I got a role now, and, and I know what my role is. It's defined. And if I keep working at it, I'm going to get more responsibility. I'm going to get more playing time, and I'm going to be on the ice a lot more.
right? So I saw this guy in the second line a lot. He was out there competing, man. Before you know it, really quiet kid. I've had him in class. I, you know, been around a long time. Um, all of a sudden, he had a voice on the bench. And he was talking to guys about what we need to do and where we need to be and, and keep fighting and things like that. Winner or losing, it didn't matter. He was talking. And then I saw a guy over here that really at times, like, it was like, do I want to be here? And then all of a sudden, he wanted to be here. And he wanted to be here and he wanted to be a part of it. And he wanted to have success. And he wanted to help guys. And he wanted to drive. And he wanted to defend the blue lines. Right? He wanted to do all those things. And all of a sudden, I saw Max having fun. You know what I mean? And that, and that was something that I, I was happy to see. Because my story is, when Max was nine years old, I walked into a, a nine year old, like a, a you, I don't know if you remember, I hope you remember. I walked into a locker room, and you, you've all been there, you're hockey parents. You know that squirt locker room. The goal is, get in, tie skates, and get the heck out, right? Because I don't want to hear the screeching, right? I, I really don't want to converse with any of the nine year olds, right? And, and I don't want anything bad to happen to me or anyone else while I'm there because I would feel responsible, right? <laughs> because maybe the coach isn't there or whatnot. So I learned a valuable lesson, one that I knew prior to this event, right? I, I go into the set locker room, I tie my son's skates, and in the midst of tying my son's skates, I realize that there is an ice ball sliding down the back of my pants. <laughs> and, the, and the valuable lesson was, I can try to remember this, the valuable lesson was, plumber butt's not acceptable anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I, I, I popped up, I said, what happened? And Max is laughing at me, and he's on the other side of the room already. And, um, and again, you may not remember that, but I, I remember it. <laughs> so from that point, from that point, I, I go a little tighter with the belt. And I, I, I send, send my wife or another dad, uh, Eric. I've sent Eric in a few times. So take care of the right? But this was a kid when, we, when he was young. He had so much fun, and he was wild. And, he, and all of a sudden, I, as a dad last year watching from a distance last time, I could tell he was a You know what I mean? But you, you embrace that grind thing with you, right? So this is the deal. This guy works, man. He works when nobody's looking. And that's what you want from your guy. You want him to work when nobody's looking. And the reason I know he works when nobody's looking is this. I, I know the nickname, right? You know the nickname. Right? So, I, I, so Blonde Jesus lives in my neighborhood. <laughs> Blonde Jesus lives down the street from me, right? And if you don't know, I live on the hill on Fairchild. And uh, this summer, I'm out... You know, it, it was COVID, right? So we spent yeah, we spent a lot of time in our garages, right? So, so I'm in my garage, right? I, I even put a TV in there and it did some things. It's my garage, right? So I'm out there. And my garage space is Fairchild. And all of a sudden, I, it was almost like I saw the light. I, I, I saw blonde Jesus on rollerblades going down my hill with no shirt on, right? <laughs> And he was cooking, man. He was cooking. And I, I ran in the house. I go, Mike, I think I just saw Blonde Jesus on rollerblades going down the Fairchild Hill about 100 miles an hour. And he, 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 he ran on the front porch and then he gets to the bottom. He's like, yeah, that's him, Dad. <laughs> right? So, but again, this guy worked this year. He found a niche. He found the grind. He started embracing the grind. He had started having fun. And he, and he did some things. He became a leader. I'm really proud of both guys. I'm proud of them because... Um, I'm going to hand both of them a letter here that we handed out a couple today. I think this is really important. Dr. Kramer, Maximilian, who's awesome. Gold <laughs> scholar athletes, 3.5 or better, that's huge. Uh, to be a student athlete, student comes first. To do that during a time when you're competing, you're battling COVID, you're doing all the things you've got to deal with in the last year, it's very important. I'm very proud of both guys. <laughs> Third year award, that's a big deal, right? Y'all will put that on the wall somewhere, someday, and uh, you know that the expectation is next year a good group of dudes is leaving, right? And, and, a, and a good group of dudes is starting to get elevated in those leadership positions. And I think this year two guys found their place, and next year hopefully there's more more responsibility, more that comes with that, and you guys will build off that and keep going. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, that's a tough act to follow. 
Um, so the one thing I did remember while I was standing there, and he was telling me the story, because I've heard that story this year. And I mean, I used to ride my bike down that hill, and I was afraid I was going to hit a rock, let alone go like 35 miles per hour down on two rollerblades and hit a rock and crack my skull. Uh, but I do want to say thank you to Mr. Kramer. All right, Mr. Kramer sharpened our skates all season long, and I, I knew, I told you I was going to forget, but I remembered over there. Sometimes us, uh, you know, you, you get those flashes. But thank you so much. Without without your help and, and coming in and sharpening the skates for the boys, it, it's truly appreciated. And you've been doing it for a lot. I mean, since I've been here, which is this is three seasons for you, two for me. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Kramer, for always being there to sharpen. All right, Mr. Kramer, tell us about Apollo. All right, so uh, I got to go over here because all my stuff is over here on the table. But uh, I'm gonna be talking about the seniors. Oh yeah, right. I forgot. The, yeah, yeah. the coach Angus. Forgot about Jay. I forgot about Jay. <laughs> <laughs> shut down um, due to contact tracing, but man, uh, Jake, Jake is a tremendous leader, and I, I mean, I, I'm just fortunate enough that I've been here the last two years to see him. Um, I, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been here for longer, but, uh, and that goes for with all these guys that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Um, you know, I, I, only being here for the last two years, I, I really wish for these, these seniors that I'm going to talk about, and, and Jake as well, I, I mean, uh, I wish I'd been here from the beginning. Um, and you're a special group of individuals. So I'm going to have all the seniors come up here. Um, I want you guys to spread out, okay? Socially distance. We're pretty good at that, right? We know. Um, although sometimes, you know, we gotta we gotta reiterate the mask uh, rules, and we paid for that only one time this season, right, Coach? Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we 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 had been shut down a couple of times, and uh, but we can do that. So I, I need I want to have all the seniors come up. So Denny. Jack, Cage, uh, Ethan, uh, and I'm going to get Jason in Zoom. I'm going to let Jason in. He's probably like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> no, you guys can spread out. Oh, yeah. Let's see if they pop in. All right, so Jason, I don't know, if, and, and Taya, and... Uh, Dave and Jason, and uh, if you guys are watching, the Zoom link is open, so feel free to join. Um, if you don't, we're still going to talk about you. So not, not only you're on Facebook Live, you're also on Zoom. Um, so you know, all you guys that are sitting down here before before I give these guys their awards, and then before we go into the special awards, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about is is you know seeing because of the giants before you. Okay, standing on the shoulders of men and being able to see further. Okay? These guys are not giants. And, and it's unfortunate because I, I only have to be a part of it for two years with three of you guys um, and one year we came. And uh, we always talk about that. It's always, who are the guys before us that paved the way? Okay? They were those guys once. They were those, little, they were those guys in the sport locker room putting ice cubes down Coach Haney's uh, <laughs> 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 um, 
you know, all these guys, they've been there. Um, and now they've led the way and they've paved the way for you guys. So you guys are now going to be the ones that, in the future. This is going to be you. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we talk about this all the time. I would give anything, anything to be able to put that red, white, and black jersey back on. One more time. Okay? But, I mean, are any of us going to play at the next level? Maybe. Does that matter? No. What matters is the memories that you make with these guys for four years. I still talk with guys that I've played with. All right? It's a tremendous brotherhood. And, and like I said it at the reverse wrap, and I'll say it again tonight. All right? It's a different breed. And it's a different thing. We're all family. And until you're part of a hockey program, you don't know anything about it. Well, I feel sad sometimes for the people that are not a part of it because they're missing out. It's a really tremendous sport. So you guys that are sitting here, it's not going to, there he is, look at Jay. Oh, yeah. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys have been one year, some of you have been two, some of you have been three. All right? Take everything that you've learned from these young men and use it. And teach the guys after you and after that. Okay? Nobody can take your memories away. And I'm telling you, nobody can take away that locker room after we get a roar. <laughs> Ever. That's why we were giving them. So, you guys should give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> So, like I said before, I mean, like, and we, all these coaches have touched on it, all right? I'm, I'm going to start here with Denny. Denny, I mean, lots of obstacles this season, right? Denny, Denny was in quarantine. He missed um, the first four or five, six games, okay? But we knew what we were getting. I mean, anytime Denny steps, steps on the ice, you know what you're getting with Denny. You're getting a guy that works hard. You're getting a guy that leads by example. And you're getting a guy that he, he would skate through that brick wall for you, no matter what. All right? And you've been a tremendous leader. And to see you grow from last year to this year, um, you know, not, not all captains are vocal leaders, but you need some of those vocal leaders. That, and, and Denny's that guy. Not only is he the vocal leader, but his, his grit and his tenacity um, is it, some of the best I've ever seen. Uh, again, Denny is getting a Scholar Athlete Award. Right. And, you know, I, with all these guys, and I, I mean, I, I, you know, it's hard because I don't have a lot of memories over the last couple years, but I mean, Denny coming back in his first game and just, just flying around, hitting people, always, always talking. We always tell the guys, like, you can't talk with your cell phones, all right? You can't text each other on the ice. This guy is the loudest guy on the ice, no matter what, <laughs> all right? No matter what. And you need some of those guys out there to remind these guys that it's okay to communicate with one another, all right? Communication is huge. And Denny, your, your, your tenacity and your grit and everything, Denny gets his fourth year award. Denny finished the season again. Um, he, he had two goals, uh, six assists, and eight points. And again, remember, we played 17 games, so we only played 11. Okay? So, I mean, eight points in 11 games, that's, that's pretty good. And um, I think our penalty minutes as a team were down, but that, that's tremendous effort. Um, and Denny, I mean, we're, we're going to miss you. And all of you guys here, we're going to miss every single one of you, but you know the door is always open. Okay? Forever. All right, uh, next guy, Jack. You guys ever seen Wayne's <laughs> I mean, I think this could be Gar's long lost brother. <laughs> all right. uh, no, but in all seriousness, uh, Jack has done a little bit of everything for us. Um, at least in the two years I've been here. Last year, Jack started the season at forward, right? Not, not this season, but previous season. And then I think he moved to D. 
and then he moved back to forward. Okay? But this year we solidified Jack's role, and he knew from the beginning of the season, like, you're playing defense. And that's it. And once Jack knew what his role was, Jack, Jack is a, he, he's the, the guy that can get away with anything. All right? He's sneaky. All right? He's very sneaky. I don't know if it's the long hair or what. But this guy right here, he'd always be behind the play, like, I, back checking hard. Um, give the guys a little, you know, a little quick stick to let them know they're there. He's kind of like, he reminds me a little bit of the Hanson brothers right there because he's got the look going on from slap shot. But, I mean, Jack, again, another guy that will work hard. He'll do anything you ask. So coachable. All right? All of these guys. But, but Jack's coachability has been great. And, uh, you know, again, I, I really wish I had more time than just the two seasons with you guys, but I, you've done a great job. And uh, Jack is uh, getting his third year award. Congratulations. Jim. Uh, Jack, although, like, just look, I, I keep forgetting I have stats up here, but really stats don't matter to me because I sometimes stat, if you score goals, you score goals. I mean, those are important. And, you know, there, there's other things that people do off the ice, and, and Jack's one of those guys that just does things that he, he works hard, he back checks hard. Um, you know, he, he may or may not score goals, but I think he had one assist this year, but that doesn't matter. I mean, there were times where Jack was making plays occur. Jack saved a lot of breakaways this year. We, we got caught on a lot of hot rushes out back, and, and, and Jack did a tremendous job with that, so great job. All right, Kate. All right, Kate. All right, Kate. Kate, this is uh, Kate's first season with us, and, uh, you know, last year, um, you know, it was unfortunate we get the opportunity to have you play here, and um, we were super excited to have you. So, you know, I didn't really know, none of us knew what we were getting when Kate showed up. Um, we knew he was good, but I'll tell you what, Kate, Kate is probably one of the best skaters fundamentally I've, I've ever seen, all right? Uh, we were just walking practice and Coach Piper will tell you, I, Cade, Cade has the ability to go from zero to 60 like this, and I, I've never seen anything like it. Um, he, he was such a tremendous leader without being a captain, okay? And that, there's something to be said about that. You know, everybody, the C on your chest, yes, that, that is important, right? The A on your chest is important, but you need other guys that are leaders that you need to surround yourself with. And, and Cade was very vocal. He would always, you know, hey, coach, what if we tried this? Or, uh, hey, coach, I was thinking this. You know, what do you think about this? So he was always bouncing ideas off us, and, and he, he did a great job. And I'm just, I just wish we would have had you last year. Your effort has been second to none. Um, you know, I, I think you had a great season, and I, I really appreciate everything. For us, Kate ended the season with 14 goals, 10 assists, and 24 points in 17 games. So remember, we're only playing 17 games, so I can only imagine what some of these stats would have been like had we had 35 games, 35 games under our belt. And that's just a so Kate is going to be receiving his first year letter and his numerals. All right, we're on to the Zoom guy. All right, we're talking about you now, Jay. You hear me? Yeah, you want to say hello? I got to try it on. I got to turn you up. Keep the volume button, man, coach. There it is. Can you hear me now? Go ahead and talk, Jay. All right. All right, um, Jason, another guy. Um, you know, his role at the beginning of the season started. Um, and he was our, he was on our second line to start the season. Um, and we, we had to make some adjustments. We, we needed to make changes. Um, and, and Jason, Jason has, did such a great job at center for us. And Jason, I don't know, nobody will know this except for the guys here in this room. But Jason would stand by the door at the end of every practice. After we all got our break and everything and the guys cleaned up. And Jason would let everybody go, and Jason was at the door. Good practice, good job, keep it up. You know, Jason was the guy that was there just tapping everybody's mitts as they came off. And, you know, he, again, another leader, another giant that's done so many things. And he started on the second line, and then we moved him to the first line and changed things up a little bit, and he really took off. Now, as far as, like, goals and assists go, I think Jason, you had two goals and six assists and eight uh so eight points, and I think you also missed, did you miss five games, I think? Four or five. 
Okay, so again, like, I, the things that these guys did with, with all the COVID adversity and all the obstacles, uh, just second to none. Uh, Jason uh, is also receiving the Scholar Athlete Award. because he wants to be a physical therapist and he's out looking at like schools like TCU and Auburn and Alabama, schools that they would look at me and be like, uh, yeah, you, you, you have no business being here. <laughs> All right. So congratulations, Jay. We'll, we'll get this to you when you, uh, when you get back. All right. And also Jason is receiving his fourth year award. All right. Jason's a four year letter winner and that's, uh, you know, that's a huge accomplishment. All right, it's for all these guys to, to win four, to letter for four years in a varsity sport is, is pretty tough, um, especially in hockey. Hockey's not an easy sport. So Jason, fourth year award, congratulations. <laughs> all right, Ethan. <laughs> Man, um, you know, again, all, I think, you know, all, a lot of these guys, um, True, true leaders, and, and Ethan, um, you were so quiet last year, more, more quiet than I thought, and then this year you really, like, you said things when you needed to say things, um, and I think you realized your leadership role and your position on the team, and I mean, there were some games where, like, every time you touched the puck, and I think it was the Nordonia game, I think that was when you scored, all right, so Ethan, Ethan scored seven goals in one game, which was a school record. All right, he uh, beat his probably one of his best friends, uh, Nick Preston, who had six in one uh, game last year. Uh, just to see it, like I was watching it because I, I, I had COVID. I'm watching it on Facebook and like I, I just felt it. He had three and I was like, whoa, that's a natural hat trick. And then it was six. And then I was like, oh man, he's going to break the record. And, and he did. Uh, like, and it wasn't because he, he just was taking the puck from guys. It was just because he was working hard. All right, he was putting himself into a position, and Ethan has always done that. He's put himself into positions to where he can make himself successful in his, in his teammates. Um, and really smart kid, super tremendous athlete. I mean, 31 goals, 13 assists, 44 points in 17 games. Um, how close were you to 100 goals? Seven away from 100 goals in four years, okay? Um, I, I don't know for a fact, but I was looking at the record book. He's, he's pretty high up on, on goals. He's pretty high up in hat tricks. He won Tenny's hat, I believe, three times this year? Two. Two. All right, Tenny's hat. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know, Teddy's hat is one of those things we give out. And it's not necessarily for the guy that's, that scores all the goals in the game. It's for the guy that's the hardest worker. The guy that's grinding and, and getting everybody to, to do things. All right? And, and be better teammates and be better hockey players. So, um, Ethan, again, another scholar athlete. All right? So, Ethan's getting his scholar athlete. And he is also earning his fourth year award. But again, just as a whole, like all these guys had so many individual accomplishments, and I wish I had more time with you guys. But you guys know, and you have my phone number, and you can call me anytime if you need anything. All right, that goes for everybody on the team from now until you're 50. All right, I probably won't be around, but <laughs> until you, you know, um, but. You guys, if you need anything, all right, we, you know, at all, I, I just uh, thank you guys for making this a memorable season for me. Without your guys' leadership, without your guys' tenacity, without your humble character, we wouldn't have been where we were. So thank you guys. Down with your special awards now. Stay close though. Alright. Yep. Alright, next awards are our captain's award. Uh, our uh, senior co captain, Denny Allen.
senior co-captain, Ethan Steffel. And just so you guys know, Ethan has been a captain for the last two seasons. Okay. Um, assistant captain award, Jake Bennett. Jake has also been a, a captain for two years. And the newest member to our captains was uh, Jason Sears. Um, these haven't been released yet, but they will be going out this week, all right? Um, we voted a while back on the Greater Cleveland High School Hockey League uh, White Division, okay? So, um, let me start with going order. All right, so first team, all white division, Ethan Steffel. Second team, all white division, Jake Bennett. And honorable mention, Jason Sears. Rough Rider 
alumni hockey scholarship winner for the $1,000 award is Dennis Hanley. started doing in the state a while ago. It's called the uh, it's the High School Hobie Baker Award. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the award yet, so um, it's going to be shipped to my house, um, and they, that was takes several weeks. So I know um, we didn't get that until the end of March, beginning of April last year as well. Um, and this goes out to a person that shows extreme character, not only on and off the ice, in the academic classroom. Um, you know, has charisma and, and is just a, a overall good uh, student athlete. And this year's Hobie Baker Award goes to Jason Sears. <laughs> all right, and last but not least, um, our MVP. All right, the, this is the Adam Hamilton uh, MVP Award. Uh, I couldn't think of a, a more deserving person over the, the course of the last couple of years of coaching this individual. Uh, this individual, um, he, he works hard. He's a leader. He's uh, a good teammate. He's coachable. Um, he leads by example. Not only is the loudest leader or vocal leader in the locker room, um, but he did rise to that occasion this year. Um, and this year's Adam S. Hamilton Most Valuable Player was Ethan Steffel. <laughs> All right, and I think there's gifts up here for the seniors, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so seniors, if you guys can come back up real quick. Um, I know there's gifts from the Booster Club, right? Yes. And then yeah. the other gifts, Mrs. Steffel, are from... The Steers is and Steffels. Steers is and Steffels, okay. So let's do the one from the Sears and the Staples first. Okay. Jack. Dave. All right. All right, guys. Go ahead. Uh, Jason, you, you'll get yours when you, uh, well, you probably already have yours since your mom gave you. Do you have yours? Okay. All right, go ahead and open them. Coach um, Edwards, well, before you end, yeah. I think the boys have something to give to you coaches. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs>
throughout the season and tonight. We owe everything to you for the past however many years we've been playing hockey and for the endeavors we have in the future. And I'd also like to thank all of our coaches. First starting with uh, Coach Gallagher and Coach Angus. We thank you for both your devotion to hockey and to this team. We thank you for pushing us when we needed it and cheering for us in our time of, or our time of victory and being there for our defeats as well. As Peter Roosevelt once said, the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood. And we thank you for actually being in the arena with us during all those times. Thank you for making us better players and better teammates and better people. We appreciate the time you committed to this team. Thank you. They can just give them their gifts, yeah. Yeah, if they want to, or just hold it, and that's fine. Up to you. Okay. <laughs> You guys need to move more. You're out of frame. Okay. <laughs> Be Coach Haney and Paul. And for Coach Edwards, Coach Piper, and Coach Haney, without you, there would have been no season this year. When our hockey program was up in air last summer, you three coaches came together and took time out of your busy schedules. I know you live in Chardon. <laughs> you got the deck in golf, and you have baseball. But thank you all for making time out of your busy schedule in order to Give us the best season that we could have had. Uh, this year had many firsts for us. No home rink, masks, and being quarantined four times, for me at least. Um, with all that said, we, we enjoyed every single minute we have the ice together and cherish it for many years to come. Surprise, Newton said, if I have seen further than other men, that have stood on the shoulders of the Giants. Within our hockey program, we have many Giants that have helped us along the way. Coaches, the team, and especially the seniors, I'd like to thank you for being our Giants and guiding us throughout the season for the past four years, and especially this year through this weird COVID. <laughs> um, as we now stand on your shoulders, we can see that the future is limitless. And to the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors who are here and at home, uh, you now all stand on our shoulders of us seniors. Take the successes that we all create within this program this year and make the commitment to do great things next season. Thank you all, and thank you, coaches.